Hello YouTube, this is Frono with another Minecraft video for you. Today I'm going to talk about brewing and potions. As you may know, potions are great in Minecraft. I couldn't imagine building a garden farm without invisibility, and night vision, and underwater breeding, and nether without fire resistance is also not very healthy. So potions are great. Brewing potions, on the other hand, is one of the most unnerving things I know in Minecraft. I mean, it's truly horrible. First, you have to know the recipe. And I have a terrible memory, so I can't remember any potion ingredients. First, I have to hit the wiki and look up the potion. Then, I have got to prepare the water bottles, three water bottles. Then, you need to locate the ingredients. Okay, so let's... Let's do fire res, okay, so this is that, and maybe a redstone to make it last longer. And okay, now you go to the brewing stand, put in the, the water bottle, hopefully not the awkward potion from another misplaced brewing attempt. Then you start brewing, and now you have to wait 20 seconds before you get to the next ingredient. 20 seconds where I can't do much, except maybe go for another brewing stand and do the same thing. So brewing a potion can be up to two minutes, which is really, really a long time. Of course, there are plenty of solutions of automated brewing, but if you look, at, look them up on YouTube, usually you will find two kinds. One are automated brewing stand that will brew exactly one potion in one configuration. It's always the same potion, always the same ingredients. And the other brewing stands that I found are brewing stands like the one I created earlier, which is automated, but you have to select the ingredients. For example, for a fire res, we would need nether wart, and then we would need the magma cream, which goes in here, and then I would need no fermented spider eye, but redstone, and then make it a splash potion, and then go. So I thought, wouldn't it be great if I had a brewing stand where I could just dial up a potion in the way I want it, configure it like I want, but without me having to remember the recipe. And wouldn't it be great if I wouldn't have to wait two minutes, like I have to wait here, but if I could just select the next potion. So I went ahead and built this one. And I'm going to show you in a moment. So here's my user interface of my dial a potion brewer. As you can see on the left side, we have the various potions with a button. So if you want to brew a certain potion, you just have to hit the button and it will start brewing. And on the other side are the modifiers. Now, they have to be selected. They can't be automated because you only you can decide if you want a stronger potion with glowstone or a longer potion with redstone. Only you can decide if you want a lingering potion or a splash potion. Let's do strength. So just hit the button, a light will come up, then all the lights will go on. And once all the lights are out, you can select the next potion. Okay, so leaping. You can also select the same potion multiple times. That's not a problem. And what the system will do is essentially to collect the ingredients for the potions, make like an order and send this order to a brewing stand to be processed. So. Let's have a look at the redstone. So the easy part behind the buttons uh, is a simple set of droppers that contain the ingredients. So for example, this one is weakness, contains the fermented spider eye and the redstone, that's all there is. I can put up to four ingredients here. So if I hit this button, then all of these dropper in a row will fire once. Then they will put the ingredients onto these honey blocks. Honey blocks because they are not full block, so the minecart can, uh, can pick up the ingredients. On the other side, we get the modifiers, the redstone, the glowstone, the uh, gunpowder, and all the ingredients will arrive here. This is a standard minecart unloading station, and all the ingredients will be put in a shulker box, which is dispensed here by this dispenser. And once all the ingredients are in, the shulker box is immediately broken, and put into a chest and will be processed further. So the reason why we use a minecart 
is that a minecart makes it really easy to decide when I have all the ingredients for one potion. So I could probably use water streams, but then you it would be pretty hard to decide is this the last ingredient for the for this potion or is it already the first ingredient for the next potion? So when do we have to start a new order? So for with the minecart it's easy, so I have the ingredients in there, the minecart will be sent on its way, and then I know it's time to break the shulker box. Here I use a little delay to make sure that the ingredients get into the shulker box before I break it, so that's not a problem. Let's also have a look at the dispensing of the modifiers here. Um, this is really simple. The principle is the same for all of them. I have a like a container that contains them, like here this hopper contains the gunpowder. And this container will be locked by two ways. The first way is actually, or maybe, this lever. So if this lever is on, then this container is locked. If not, then it's not locked, but it, there is a second way to lock it, which is here by this red, redstone torch. And whenever a brew potion, this redstone torch will go off for a moment, just long enough so that the hopper can put one item out here. So, and then if the hopper, hopper isn't locked by this lever, it will output one item. So there you can decide if you want a gunpowder. And the same system applies for redstone and, and glowstone, except that there are in two different hoppers. Let's go into spectator mode real, real quick to see it. So here you can see the one hopper containing the redstone, this is the hopper containing the glowstone, and they are also locked by this target block, which is also powered by this redstone torch. But they are also powered by this lever, so one of them is powered. So if I have the lever on, like this, then I will power the one with the glowstone. If the lever is off, I will power the one with the redstone. And if I select a potion, then this redstone torch will go off for a moment, and through this chain of redstone torches, the target block will be off for a second, or half a second, enough so that one item can make it into the output hoppers. So this way I get either glowstone or redstone. There are some potions where you can choose between redstone and glowstone. So for example, uh, water breathing is a potion where you can only apply redstone to make it last longer. So for this potion, I will automatically choose redstone and it doesn't matter what this lever here says. So technically I use a redstone signal and the redstone signal will only be strong enough to, to get by this comparator if, I am, if it comes here from the front buttons. All right. So all the ingredients are put in a shulker box. The shulker box is broken. So the shulker boxes that come in will be sent to processing to a brewing stand. But in order to speed the thing up, I distribute them among two units. So this is, uh, is the water stream to the first. This is the water stream to the second. This here is a perfect item distributor by an Ilmango who will split the potions 50-50. So one, uh, the first potion will go to one side, the next potion to the other, and so on. Each of these processing units take takes roughly 10 seconds to process a potion. So there is a clock that will output one shulker box into the water stream about every 11 seconds, so that there is enough time to brew. So what happens here is the shulker box is dispensed, and the contents are put in this water stream, and the yellow part here is an item orderer, so it does not sort the items, but it puts them in the, into the correct order. So this unit will make sure that the nether ward is always the first. Then comes the variable ingredients, which could like, for example, be a golden carrot or sugar or a magma cream. And then we have uh, all the, the modifiers, the redstone, the glowstone, the gunpowder and the dragon breath. I have made a separate video where I describe this item order and I will link this video in the description. Okay. So then the items are dispensed in the correct order and they will be sent here to the brewing units. And I have 10 brewing uh, units in parallel here. So here are five and five are on the other side. And I have a whole row of hoppers and 
at any time nine of the hoppers are locked and one hopper is open. So this is the hopper that will receive the ingredients. And if we get uh, new items, so if a new shaker box arrive just before the items arrive, I will change this here. So I will move this once so that always the next brewing stand will get the ingredients. So it takes up to two minutes to brew a potion. This unit needs maybe 10 or 11 seconds. So this works out nicely. Uh, I just need 10 brewing stands to make sure that whenever new ingredients arrive, I will have a, a brewing stand that is empty. The brewing stand itself is a very simple design that I created myself. It's a two wide tileable brewing stand that whenever items arrive in the, in the input hopper here, it will automatically start brewing and it has a water supply here on the side. So it will automatically put in water bottles once the ingredients arrive and output the potions once they're ready into this output stream here. For this brewing stand, I have also created a separate video. So I will link that one in the description, but I think it's really simple. You can probably work out how it works. So that's, that one is easy. And here the blue part is the water supply. So here we have a dispenser with empty water bottles and it will create filled water bottles here. So whenever we activate the brew a brewing stand, this dropper will put three water bottles here in the stream so that we always have enough water bottles to work with. So it's truly fully automated. And the, the finished bottles are sent here to this dropper and put into this water stream. And I have built two units which are exactly equal. So both are basically the same. You could, if you want to brew potions faster, if you want to parallelize it more, you could build further one like three, four, five or whatever. Il Mango also has a design for this to distribute items over a number of outputs, not only two. So you could parallelize that. But I think this is already pretty fast. It can brew one potion every six seconds. So that's quite good. This is just a little gadget that I picked up in Zedaf's hilariously funny brew brewing video from Hermitcraft 8. So if you haven't seen that one, make sure to look it up. I will also link that where Zedaf creates a brewing stand that is a little bit less automated than this one here. But it has a, the wonderful delivery of ingredients using a slime launcher. So I thought I had to use that. But uh, in my case, I won't use the, uh, put the ingredients in using the slime launcher, but I will send uh, the potions that I have brewed here into these output chests. So I certainly had fun creating this. The system behind me will only work in Java because it uses quasi-connectivity in quite a few places, but the items order and the brewing stand are really easy. They should also work on Bedrock. So if you redesign the system that creates the shulker boxes, you could probably build the other ones on Bedrock too. Yeah, I thank you for listening this long. I hope you had a bit of fun. Leave a comment if you have questions. Also leave a comment if you want a block by block building tutorial. Please let me know if you liked the video and if you want to see more videos like that. Thank you very much and bye bye.